light exists for us to utilize as the optimum uh, healing current. So anytime we want to get a healing or um, get well, and I've realized this since very early on, that there were, you know, the, that the universe was teeming with that healing light, and I, I could just access that and stream it through my body, just like you say, scanning it. Just run, run the scanner, my mind's eye up and down my body, and then, you know, flow the light through. And so I do things where I look at myself and I see my back and I go up and down it and then I turn myself around and then I go up and down it, you know. And um, it always works because it's divine energy that we don't need a medium for. And this is just, we don't, ha we don't need a medium. It, you know, the laser itself it embodies that concept of harnessing the light. So it's our human way of physicalizing what e exists already. So we should all be, you know, maximum users of light and understand that that's the gift that's there for us to just, you know, flow through our body or any area of life that we want to heal. So, you know, this, this morning my talk is on the return of the Cosmic Christ, which is a most magnificent uh, topic. And before we get into that, I'd just like to do a short um, opening treatment. Right now, I recognize there is only one perfect, infinite life, one power, one light supreme, and that is us, that is all that is. For all that is, is born of the cosmic one. Right now, I speak my word on behalf of all past, present, and future for all those here and those yet to come to say we are one with the light of God. We are one with a sublime understanding. I am the resurrection and the life. And I give thanks this very morning that we are blessed mightily, empowered, transfigured, and transformed in the deepest deep this morning. That each one of us receives the perfect revelation required to ascend to the next level of knowing, to perfect that dearest area of life we desire to be perfected through perfect conscious understanding, through the streaming of infinite life, unblocked and free throughout our entire physical, mental, emotional, spiritual inner structure. Thank you, God, thou art the greatest alchemist of all. Thou art the light that frees. I know that my word is one with the great one, with divine intent and purpose, that it moves through into action with ease and grace on behalf of every being here, removing that now which is the time to be removed. That trouble or difficulty, which no longer belongs to each jewel of being here. Thank you, God. This purpose is accomplished complete. All is very well. All is healed. I know that my word is one with the sweeping action of the cosmos, divine in all, the jewel and the pearl, and so it is. Okay, so this morning we're having the <coughs> great opportunity to, uh, while we're enjoying uh, Christmas, New Year's, to go into the underside of this uh, event, this occasion uh, of celebration that we go through. And 
I want to say that what we as metaphysicians, one with God and with spiritual knowing, are in truth celebrating is that perfect birth into consciousness of the truth of being. The birth into conscious awareness of the truth of being. This birth, which is for each and every one of us, was demonstrated for all eternity through the birth of Jesus. A perfect child, as are we all, we are all perfect children of the infinite. Jesus embodies that idea of perfection that we are. So Jesus fully realized the potential of his divinity, who he is in spirit, and brought it out into life. So he brought this truth out of who we are in and in front of all, and he lived his life, a life of perfection and completeness and total risen consciousness, and left that imprint for all of time, left the glorious imprint of perfect spirit to resound throughout the ages to ring as a perfect sound of memory, a cell of memory throughout the ages, through the living example, through the bringing of principle as practical and absolutely uh, demonstrable uh, in his life. So he gave his life, so to speak. We hear this, you know, he gave his life. We don't understand what that fully means. He gave his life as the divine example of the perfection that we are. He demonstrated through his beingness the perfect cosmic pattern of being, the divine spiritual prototype which belongs to all of us. The beautiful Jesus appointed by the Divine Ones to carry out the mission of truth for all of us has blessed us infinitely. So he agreed, and even in his darkest moments of wondering, can I go any further? Can I really keep this pact that I have made? Do I, when he was, moments of going into his own mortalities, but don't forget, Jesus ran, had to run the course of coming up over all obstacles that we all have to. And so he demonstrated a choice to move through the last obstacle of our identification with matter, with physical body. When he said, you know, if you can take this from me, Please take it. So here he was showing his humanness like we all have. Oh God, please, I don't want to confront this because that's our resistance and our feeling of attachment to the physical, feeling and thinking that we are matter. So Jesus decided, in spite of what he was feeling at any given moment, to carry through the divine mission to lead the imprint for all of us to follow. Who's the most famous person that you've ever heard of? Who's the star of stars? Who is the one whose name is in quandary, in question, who, who people think about? The great intellects gather to pick apart and discuss and try to you know, analyze what this is. And it's so simple. It's the perfect pattern given. Okay, so how grateful we are during this season and how great it is to read within his beautiful story 
the universal story of our lives, each and every one of us of who we are, how great it is that the infinite loved us so much to bring this light forth for us and that his consciousness agreed as a person and he came to remind us that we are all that potential full consciousness. Jesus taught us a radical lesson beyond rules and regulations. He was the living embodiment of spiritual truth. He taught us that we are free. Jesus lived the glory of the Father, humble and sweeter than can be imagined, sweeter than sweet, for he was the living embodiment of divine love made manifest and truth. Jesus taught intelligently, not through hard rules, but through feelingness. He taught through the lesson of love. He gathered all around him. He did not know difference of status or creed or nationality or position in life. He saw what the Father saw, and he taught through feelingness, and he taught through solution. He never abandoned anyone. He never left them without the healing that they had asked for. So he was very practical, and he brought in the energy of the Father and the love of the Father directly to each and every being he contacted. So he was supremely intelligent, and he understood beyond intellectual knowing, scientists of scientists, he understood how to move the great laws of the universe to move substance and to manifest whatever was necessary so harmonious was he. So one was he. So he had a perfect understanding of divine law and principle, which he imparted for eternity to us. And how to form what we need, the right way to come to the Father. Jesus, one with the Father, breathed the divine idea of perfection into being. So through his birth in human form came the birth of the cosmic universal Christ consciousness. Now Jesus fulfilled the potential of the Christ consciousness, which is all of our potential. The cosmic Christ consciousness is the anointed the perfected consciousness of humanity. And it's settled at the center of our crown chakra, of a thousand points of light, it, where the entry of divine information is, rests that cosmic pattern. So it was printed into the mind and comes into us through the center of our crown chakra. Through his birth came that awakening before it was asleep. But God knew it was necessary, lest we get too far down there, that we needed a wake-up call. So through his birth came the awakening of that perfect pattern within every being to have and to hold and to refer to forever as the way into eternal bliss. So Jesus taught us to bring principle into being, to incorporate it into our lives and, into, and in relationship to one another, in relationship to one another. For here is where we are to manifest the truth of our being. For to live the life of the divine standard the divine standard and the single eye, right here in relationship to one another and in relationship to our creative uh, beingness. Here is where we are to manifest the truth of our being, for here is where the Father has placed us. 
Here is where the Father has placed us, on this good earth. So here is where we are to bring it out, just as Jesus did. So Jesus taught us the invincible pattern of identification to freedom and joy, which is I and the Father are one and indivisible. Nothing can come between us. There is no power other. I and the Father are one and indivisible. Jesus taught, it is the Father within me who doeth the work. I of myself do nothing. He taught us right relationship to cosmic principle. I choose what I desire, and the Father within me, meaning the cosmic principle, doeth the work. I of myself am nothing. He taught us right position in, ter in relationship to the infinite, right humility, not to effects, not to appearances, not to persons, but humility to principle and to truth. Okay? So, and thou shalt not place any concept of God or power or source of your life above the perfect God of our being. This is the whole thing of idolatry. You know, how we try to make a person our God and say, we can't live without them. Or a situation, our God, or a source, not recognizing that this person is just a momentary or a situation, a momentary channel of infinite love ever moving through us. So behind everything, he taught us to acknowledge source and to see the truth of the, where the emanation of our good comes from, and that is from that capsule of infinite love that streams are good to us when we recognize it. Jesus taught that we are born of cosmic grandeur, that we are light beings, sons and daughters of the Most High. Jesus demonstrated the path of resurrection and ascension into blissful dimensions of higher consciousness, and he taught how to overcome the world. What does that mean? The world of our attachments and false identifications. So he taught us through the path of perfect knowing we may overcome our issues, the world, the magnetism. Jesus taught that we are eternal life and earth is a stopover on the journey of unending perfection unfolding and we are to bring our precious gifts of knowing to earth plane and awaken the sleeping soul of humanity and remind our loved ones and all to awake and to realize that this is not all there is. The greatest thing that we can do is to inspire those dear to us to know the truth of their perfect being that they are divine, cosmic beings at root, however we may do that. But to light that light, to light that light of inspiration and to do the job of freeing and emancipation in our lives and then for others, because it's one world. Thus, we cannot leave people behind and say, well, that has nothing to do with me. I'm not responsible. We are responsible for there's only one body of being. So through our, how do we act out our responsibility? Through our good knowing, as Jesus demonstrated, whoever came to him, whoever he spoke with, he gave a jewel of truth to, a jewel of emancipation to. And the life was made better. So this is how we can carry on that consciousness. Okay. Jesus taught, I am not of this world. And to me, this is like the most important message, and it's like the new message for the new millennium, that for so long we thought the end of the story, we got stuck and we thought the end of the story was the crucifixion. Well, that's hardly the end. The story did not end until 
he demonstrated there is no crucifixion through rising. In other words, nothing human can be done to you to permanently mar that glory of spirit that you are. Not even, you know, the picture of somebody, you know, of the uh, brutality. Still, this does not touch the perfect spirit that you are. So, he taught this emancipation, and we must understand this, and then he ra raised, through the per perfected love consciousness, he raised the molecular structure of his body to show no one but the Father, perfect, perfect life, owns me, or may take that which is mine. In other words, it's a sham. Okay? So this is a great message that we are one with infinite life, eternal life, that we are all ascending every ounce of garbage <laughs> that we release is another light molecule given back to us. Another perfect cell is teeming with energy. So he did this for us. He played the whole thing, you know, our story. Played it out. Thus we forget that we are divine beings. Jesus taught us that the Christ consciousness, Jesus was anointed the Christ. So Jesus taught us that that Christ consciousness is the perfect open door and the one that permanently heals, for it's a consciousness of truth. Jesus showed us how to come unto the Father within us and the glory of the ages, how through the pathway of silent recognition, through the pathway of love and peace and unification and I say, and I know we all say, into the universal atmosphere of being right now, thank you. We say thank you to the beautiful, beloved Jesus, our brother in humanity, for teaching us our divine destiny and our true origins, the way of light, the words, I am the way, the light, and the life. So as the light in our conscious awareness grows and increases in its radiance, radiating that light of truth, and as we are able to forgive and to release everyone and all in our personal kingdoms, okay, the hand of God then sweeps over our circumstances and experiences, touching all consciousness everywhere, and gives us a gift of healing right before us. For we have abided in the perfect law, and we have done the perfect thing, which is to abide, to perfect love, to abide and bring out the law of love. We have substituted compassion and love for competition, egoism, and opposition. We have substituted a consciousness of oneness for an idea of division, love and freeing for resentments and hates. And we have seen at the root that we are one with all and so we thank Jesus for the story of our being and for letting us know the way out, the way of full glory and full conscious recognition. Rather than dull escape, dying and getting up and dying all over again, rather than this, the glorious pathway of full conscious recognition and direct ascent. And we thank Jesus now for demonstrating, I am not my body, nor subject to birth nor death. For I am not born of man nor woman. 
I am one with perfect spirit and one with that which is greater than all in every world in every lifetime. And we thank God, infinite spirit, who gave us Jesus and the many other great teachers, but most of all Jesus, for our new millennium of light, where we have come home now and we have remembered ourselves where now, in this time, we may be free, we may free not only ourselves perfectly, but our neighbors and all of the earth. Right now, we have the power to do this. We may take up the light of the established great example right now to the ends of the earth and to the ends of the universe, singing the song of gladness. And we take on that seamless robe of universal divinity and grace. Universal divinity and grace. And this time, we promise not to go the way. Let us promise not to go to the way, the way of cultures, advanced cultures in the past, which we are on the brink of, you know, many, many, you know, the many gifts and awarenesses coming out. So we're on the brink of this very advanced car uh, culture. And let us not this time get distracted in power and vanity, forgetting our source of love. Let us say we shall not be deceived, and we shall not go the way of advanced cultures before us. We shall not falter nor fail but shall work in concert with the Supreme One. So we thank infinite God demonstrating to us that we are in mortal life and eternal bliss as we turn toward the truth. Jesus also taught a lesson of wisdom and right use of power. He was powerful beyond powerful. Why? because he utilized completely the power of the Father. And he used it with egoless, a sense of egolessness, stresslessness, and with perfect ideas of love. He used power in service of love. What could be a greater use of power? Love and joy, to bring out love and joy. Jesus taught the laws of materialization through I and the Father of one, and a consciousness of everlasting thanks. This is your law of materialization. I and the Father are one, and I thank thee for my bounty. Simple, simple formula. Jesus taught refinement and acceleration of the physical body and healing and raising it through intense love and healing all the emotional dross, which constitutes dark areas of the body. Healing through light and freedom and unification with God, the Father Principle. Jesus taught also a great healing principle, healing far and near. You know, when the centurion, through consciousness, not through the force of physical body or will, but healing as we do in treatment, through consciousness. So he taught that we don't have to be in the same spot to heal that other hand of us, you know, the other extension of us that may be in South Africa somewhere. Through right knowing, right knowing of the truth of life, no matter where it is, we may know that into the mind. And it travels through and takes place right at the specified place. So he taught a higher form of healing through the vibration of the word. Heal through the vibration of the word and your knowing and through love, rather than through body, okay, instruments. So we must all ultimately demonstrate, I am in this earth, but not of it. We must all ultimately 
fulfill the promise that God promised God's self when God manifested us as a perfect idea of emancipation and freedom. So i just like to go do a short meditation to bring this idea, incorporate this idea. So let us go within now. to that sacred, holy place of resplendent light and peace. And let us extend our heart now to that light, enwrapping and enfolding the light. Our hearts are all around it. And let us make our soul's promise and conviction right now. Let us make our heart divine pact right now. Hand in hand, one with Jesus, we say, I take on, O oh Father mine, thy recommended consciousness of wholeness, bliss, and peace. I take on thy transcendent mode of life which thou hast given me to rise above my every challenge, hand in hand, heart to heart with thee. I take on the mode of living with the awareness which transcends matter. Not to matter am I bound, no more, but to divine principle I consecrate my heart. O oh, beautiful child, cosmic child that is, innocent in God, knowing who you are, I do remember this of myself now. I hearken to my origins, and I remember, and it is magnificent. And I now throw off and strip away from my body, mind, and being, all that is encumbrance and not true about me and doesn't belong to me. I step out now of that old shell to reveal the golden light and body and the truth, the glorious, joyous truth. I am the Father are one and have always been. Above and beyond all efforting and striving and achieving, I see now the glorious truth that thou didst always reign. Thou wast always the overlord and coordinator of all. I accept now into my heart the beautiful gift of Jesus and the Christ pattern now. I give thanks that right now I have a surge of life such as I've never known moving through me and I am elevated right now to know what he knew without doubt. I lift up and exalt the truth now and let go my ways, last traces of selfishness and separation. I live to reflect the unassailable glory of thee which is me, always putting thy principles first. I am right now the resurrection and the life. I cannot anymore be confounded or confused I am the light shining and streaming anew 
over all my lands and seas and all the dominion thou hast given to me. Thank you, thy immense power is coursing through my being and flooding my very life and every avenue and channel and river right now, rejuvenating every fiber and every tissue of my being. The burning fire of thy sweeping intense glory sweeps out into the cosmos of being, dross and hardness and darkness of every kind is swept out. I am free. Thou art my eternal support and upholder in all. As I vanquish by release the lesser now, I take on the greater and I don the seamless robe of golden lights and eternity. And so it is. As, as you're filling out your treatment requests, just try using these words. Just use these words. I and the Father are one. And thank you. And then fill out whatever. And just receive. Let's just read uh, I, I am that I am and know that there is chemicalization, there is divine activity going on as we speak our word. And this word is only the beginning for us that ever expands through us and becomes more and more of that which we are. I am that I am. And right now I declare I am one with that risen consciousness sublime that knows only the perfect truth. I and the Father are one. I give thanks to the beautiful example, Jesus, who went before me to manifest and to show me, to remind me who I am. I give thanks that the splendor of the cosmic Christ pattern is now set free. That which was initiated and instated from the beginning yes. now resounds in every being. I give thanks there is no original sin, yet only original cause divine. And I marvel as I behold the overwhelmingly magnificent light of God before me. As the glorious pattern of being streams before my conscious awareness now, with its perfect imprints and eloquences unfolding, I am awed. In the perfect light of knowing now, I see the luminous truth of I am the resurrection and the life and the ascension into everlasting bliss for each and every being. O light of my life, I thank thee. Thou art ever love, eternal and true. Light of my life, I praise thy plan for eternal life and for the emancipation and raising of all. Even now, as I meditate upon the astonishing wonders of perfected life, my world is transformed and transfigured before me. The hand of God passes over the face of all. I am born anew in knowing who I am in God. Thank you, beautiful Jesus, my beloved friend, for showing me the way. I follow in thy footsteps of glory, even unto the lengths of eternity. I abide with thee in the sweetest knowing and peace. And so it is.